Giancarlo Stanton does not like Mike Fires, and I don't blame him. Fires hit him in the face with a pitch and it caused significant damage, leading to Stanton wearing that facial guard on his helmet. In their latest confrontation, Fires hit Stanton again, this time in the elbow. Words were exchanged and then Stanton took Fires deep. I love it. Each guy doing their thing. Fires is going to pitch inside if he wants to get Stanton out. Stanton needs to extend his long arms to hit for power. The chest mass continues and so does the physical intimidation. Stanton is clearly bothered by getting hit based on his post-game quote of, He wasn't trying to hit me tonight, but still. With the history, don't hit me, Stanton said Monday. That doesn't eliminate pitching inside. This is the major leagues. But either get it over the plate or make sure it doesn't hit me. The cat and mouse game begins. People get hit when you pitch inside, and now Fires knows it bothers Stanton. Major League Baseball got one of its biggest stars back when Madison Bumgarner took the mound against the Arizona Diamondbacks. Mad Bum had been sidelined all season after suffering a fractured finger on his left hand in spring training. He's back just in time to prove to the rest of Major League Baseball he's still one of the best and should get serious consideration from other teams prior to the trade deadline July 31st. In my opinion, he will be traded and he'll fetch a hefty haul of prospects in return. He's a proven postseason warrior and I know I'd want him on my team going into October. Apparently Gabe Kapler's okay with being publicly second-guessed, as long as it's by a so-called veteran leader like Jake Arrieta. Arietta, he was bitching and moaning about the defensive shifts of the Phillies over the weekend. Well, here's a thought, dude. Shifts only work when you make your pitch. Now, I'm not the hugest fan of the shifts employed by teams in today's game or the situations in which they're used, but I know enough to know that if you miss your spot, no one's going to be standing there where the ball gets hit. I watched the Braves pitching staff pitch the opposition into the teeth of the defense for a decade and they didn't need to have people running around out of position in order to do it. They had guys who could hit a spot. This whole situation reeks of insecurity. Kapler appears insecure by celebrating and spinning the comments of Arietta, almost suggesting he's afraid to ask his players to keep things in house where they belong. Arietta seems insecure about his ability to hit his spots. The Phillies have been shifting during Arietta starts all year, but never have you heard him compliment the staff for the defensive positioning when it actually worked. Can't have it both ways, dude. I had a coach tell me never ever second guess the skipper in public. Only bad things happen when you do that. I agree. I have a lot of respect for Kapler and the progress he's made as a manager, but if you want to remain in control and remain credible, you can't allow your authority to be questioned and undermined in public like that. A lot of people don't believe the baseball gods are real, but I do. I know too well that when players like Cody Bellinger stick their proverbial middle finger up at the notion of a sophomore slump, the baseball gods inevitably bite them in the ass. Well, Bellinger, he's been bitten in the ass, and now he's spending some time sitting on it. Dodger manager Dave Roberts benched the 2017 Rookie of the Year for a lack of performance. You may remember him being benched earlier this year for a lack of hustle. The sophomore slump has way more to do with complacency and arrogance than it does with an actual curse of any kind. Young players who have early success often take for granted that it will continue, while the rest of the league stays up at night figuring out ways to make sure they fail. It's not clear what the immediate future holds for Bellinger, but one thing is clear. He's going to have to perform better if he wants to find his way back into the middle of the lineup. In Chavez Ravine, he as recently as Tuesday found himself in the bottom third of the lineup, and I'm guessing that was likely the first time in Bellinger's baseball life that that's happened. Playing in the Sunday night game on ESPN suggests that your team is relevant and popular. It's not a surprise that the same teams seem to find themselves in the game more often than others. The New York Yankees are no different. They have global appeal, but they weren't too tickled to be playing the Jays on Sunday night, July 8th, followed by a late night plane flight to take part in a doubleheader against the Orioles the next day, starting at 4 p.m. That schedule is just crazy and dangerous to the health of the players, and it's avoidable. There's no need to subject these players to three games inside of a 24-hour period with travel thrown in. It's simply insane, and it looks like ESPN thought better of it. The Yankees were threatening to boycott interviews conducted by ESPN personnel, which seems interesting considered Yankees manager Aaron Boone's previous job was covering the Sunday night game for ESPN. I guess it helps to be the Yankees sometimes. As always, the worst story in baseball becomes my Sunday roast. I'll see you Sunday, and let me tell you, my gears are grinding over this one.
Hey there, and welcome to the Nuts and Bolts of Baseball. A lot of parents ask me, what's the proper way to break in a glove or a mitt? Well, it just depends on the actual glove. There are some brands of gloves and mitts out there that are very soft, almost coming out of the plastic, ready to be played with. And then there's others that take some time to be broken in. Now, these selections come from my good friends at Mizuno. And the reason why this one is inside out is because I am purposely stretching the palm open. It's brand new. I want to make sure that I keep an open glove. Now, there's a reason. Think about if you were barehanded and I threw you a ball. Your hand would be in this position. Shouldn't your glove or your mitt be a similar shape? Because you would never close your hands down like this to try to catch a baseball. So why would you break your mitt in to look like this shape? And that's effectively what our dads told us all to do when we were kids. Said, hey, rub a little oil in there, get a little glove oil in there, put a ball in there, and then wrap it up, and tie it down with a rubber band, and stick it under your mattress. Well, that's the last thing you ever want to do with a glove or a mitt. This is a horrible shape. This is not going to give you any opportunity to catch a baseball. Yeah, it's going to open up a little bit, but look at the room for error. It's very, very small. I want my glove open kind of the way Troy Tulowitzki breaks in his glove. And the reason I say that is because I want the ball to end up in the pocket over here between my thumb and my forefinger. So we want open and we want nice and soft, something that we can count on. You see the shape there. So how do we get it to soften up? Usually they come very, very stiff. Well, I can tell you there's a couple of different steps to the process. One, when you're going out to play catch, you want the leather to be moist, but you don't want to put water in it because water and leather are a very bad combo. You're going to end up with a stiff, crusty mitt that's probably going to end up cracking. So what do you do? You, br you buy yourself some good old-fashioned shaving cream, and you squirt a little bit in there, and then you take your, your shaving cream, and you rub it all around on the inside. You want to make sure that you moisten up all of the leather. Get it nice and soft and get it nice and wet without water. Okay, this is meant for skin, and leather is skin, actually. So you get it all in there. Get it nice and moist. And once the leather's moist and you get it all rubbed in, you can wipe off the excess with a towel. You see the leather starting to change colors. It's starting to soak up that moisture. Now you've got a nice moist product. Okay, and so you can go out and play catch with this now, and it'll actually shape up the way you want it to. Now, important for me, never put moisture on the back of your mitt, ever. This is the spine. You want this to remain stiff and firm because it keeps this from getting sloppy. So we want it nice and soft. We want to be able to let the ball fly into the glove and not even think about it. See, that's a nice open concept. And when our baseball flies, it can hit anywhere inside of there, and it always is going to end up right in that pocket, whereas if I've got it broken in and all closed down, I have to actually think about opening it up to catch it. We don't want that. We want a nice open glove. So remember, we've got shaving cream on the inside to moisten the leather. We go out and we play catch with soft leather. If you have a batting cage nearby and you don't have anybody to play catch with, find out whether your local batting cage will rent you some lane time. You put your glove on, you get it nice and moist with your uh, shaving cream, and you basically go in and you catch the ball coming out of the batting machine versus hitting it. Now, so we've got a very, very well broken in glove, okay? We want to make sure that we haven't trained it to be closed down. It's nice and open, especially with you guys that, that happen to wear the tools of ignorance. We want our catcher's mitt basically flat as a pancake out here on what we call the rails because that creates a nice open concept. We want the ball to end up over here, but as I said, it's been moistened. It's been broken in. One ball after another hitting it repetitively will shape the mitt around your hand, create a nice pocket between the thumb and the forefinger. And so now, how do we go about protecting this, this thing that we've spent so much time training, our, our baby? This is our bread and butter. This is what we use to, to, to make our living. This is how we play the game. We've got to be able to trust this. I want it to last. So how do we make it last? Well, you go out and you find yourself some mink oil. Mink oil is what most folks use to waterproof fine leather boots, even bags to some degree. This you can rub all over. 
okay? And you want to use it sparingly. And what I suggest is you take a little bit on your thumb, not much at a time, and just gently coat the mitt and just color it. And you'll see it's starting to change colors, okay? You should be able to accurately find yourself all over this mitt, just one thumb after another, and you'll be able to know exactly where you've placed it because you'll see the leather change color. But it, you want it all over, especially on these laces because these things get stretched out. You want waterproofing because we know sometimes it rains on a baseball field and water is the enemy. So now you've got from very beginning, if you find yourself with a glove coming out of the box or at your local sporting goods store that's closed off, flip it inside out, leave it out like this for a couple of days, let that palm stretch out, let it reshape. If you want to put uh, shaving cream on it at this point to help hasten the, the process, go for it. But leave it open like that for a couple of days. Then you get it wet again with the shaving cream. Go play catch with it, either with a buddy, your dad. Use the batting machine at the local batting cage. Play catch with it. Once you've got it already broke in, you go get yourself some mink oil and you protect your... Uh, breadwinner, so to speak. That's your mitt. That's the thing that's going to take care of you. So you need to take care of it. Hey, baseball fans. Many of you have reached out to say how much you missed my opinion and analysis before, during, and after Blue Jays games. Well, there's no need to miss me. I'm still here for you. I've just moved. Check out my new YouTube channel called Manalist TV. Go to YouTube.com and subscribe to Manalist TV, then like it and share it with your network. You get all the same insight, only slightly less censored. You still get my Sunday roast, only served up a little hotter. Want to know what's really going on in the world of baseball? Check out Manalist TV. For all your ticket needs, check out SeatGiant.ca and SeatGiant.com.